Hi, I'm Lou and today I'm going to show you how to install a generator. An emergency, of course, you can just plug in here and run an extension cord into your toaster. The problem with this method is it doesn't power your lights, refrigerator, water heater, dishwasher, furnace, or even the electric start to your gas, stove, or fireplace. I solved this problem with a 30 amp generator cable. This end goes in here. The other end goes to an outdoor mounted power inlet box. Let's take a look at how to connect this box to your electrical panel. I pulled a circuit breaker out of the box and got a ridiculously short piece of wiring to demonstrate. We'll open the box up and take out the outlet. The back of the outlet has four connectors labeled G, W, X, and Y. Typical house electrical cable has copper, black, and white wires in it, but for generators you need a 30 amp cable that adds this fourth red wire. Use a wire stripper to take off about 3 quarters of an inch of insulation off of each wire. White goes to W, copper ground wire goes to G, black goes to X, and red goes to Y. You tighten all these down with set screws on the side. At the other end of our cable, the black and red wires go into the circuit breaker and get tightened down with this set screw. This goes to the drain bar and this goes to the ground bar in the breaker box. In an actual installation, this box gets mounted to the wall. This wire goes through the wall and maybe 50 feet or so until you get to the electrical panel. To mount the circuit breaker, you take off the front of the electrical panel, put the breaker in at an angle like this, and push down. Your black and red wires go here, your white wire goes on the drain bar with the other white wires, and your ground wire goes up on the ground bar. If you don't want to spend $100 on a power inlet box, and your generator is not very far away, you can just cut the end off this cable and mount it directly in the panel. Being very careful not to cut too deep, strip back 18 inches of this black rubber coating. The sheath is off and I put a knockout clamp at the end of the cable. And I taped off the end of this to make a handy cover. There's our knockout hole and there's our wires. It's always safest to do work in the box with the power main off. Black and red wire are connected to our 30 amp breaker set. Here's the white wire connected to the drain bar and you tighten that down with this set screw and the green wire attaches to the ground bar. Here we are all wired up and the cable runs out to the generator. This interlock plate is a good idea and required by code in many states. You can buy them for $75 or get a link in the description for how to make them for free. Don't forget to put in oil if this is a brand new generator. Hook up your battery. By the way, I got this little battery maintainer for about 20 bucks. All right, let's fire up the generator. <laughs> Turn the house power off, lift our interlock plate, and turn the generator power on. And here we are, completely running on generator power. Now even our gas stove works. And our lamps. And the blower on our gas furnace. By the way, this generator has been running completely on natural gas, and I did the conversion for $10. Click on the link below in the description to see how. Thanks for watching, and good luck installing your generator.